Hi everyone, so you meet me with the van, <laughs> it's complete, uh, basically this video is going to be a, uh, a van tour, which is a bit new for us, <laughs> so it's going to be a, uh, a fishing van tour, um, we can use it obviously not as a fishing van, it can just be a normal camper van as well, that's why we did it, um, but obviously it can be a, a camper van as well, but anyway, without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, I'll give you a 360. So what I'll do is I'll just go through each individual sort of like bit of the camper and just give you a bit more detail really. So this is the bed and the couch setup. And this bed or this backrest goes up and turns into a bunk bed. Which what I'll do I'll I'll let the time lapse run on the camera as you can see over there and I'll um I'll show it I'll show it you up. Got the fridge on this side with our very first where the van's been fridge magnet. I'll just show you inside the fridge. My famous milk, if you've not seen one of my videos with that in there, that's from Chemist Bay that milk, so we always keep a spur bottle then we can fill up when whenever we're on angles. There's some bits and bats in there, some butter and a drink. A freezer department. Or freezer compartment. At the moment, there's just some squid in there. <laughs> always good to have a spur pack of squid around. And then underneath. Is a draw. On this occasion, it just holds the uh, step. It's multi purpose, like all the other draws at the moment. Right, I'll get this bed set up and then you can see that in action. As you see, we have our bunk bed. I'll show you from the back. So at this stage, that one's my dad's bed and I'm up on top. And as you can see, there's a storage net each. Bits and bobs. So I'll just show you that it's just as easy to put down as well. As you can see guys, it turns into, the bed turns into a big long couch. Probably the back is higher than we want it to be, but it's quite comfy enough. Now, I'll just show you the feature that we really both wanted a lot. And 
And there's the toilet. So there's a little window in there, as you can see, it opens and closes. I don't need to tell you why. Tower rail there. Portable toilet. Now we didn't want a built-in thing, just because if we need to change it for whatever reason, it's just simple in and out. We've got a little tap. Now this tap is fantastic tap. Absolutely love this tap. It is a USB powered, so there's a USB socket on the back. It's a USB powered tap. As in, there's a battery inside there. Now that is one fantastic tap. I've had this in the other camper, my little mini camper. And I've probably charged it twice in its lifetime. And I must have had it maybe a year and a half. So you can see how fantastic that is. So it's always for washing your hands in here and giving a quick wash. So there's a cupboard here. Again, touch cupboard with water and toilet roll. So rather than having a toilet roll holder, what we've gone for is the toilet roll holder is inside the cupboard and you just pull toilet paper off like that. As you can see, it's not humongous, but it's good enough for everything that we would want. I'll just zoom out a little bit for you. Well, as you can see, it's a full height anyway, full height toilet room. Lockable uh, handle. There we go. Just show you here quickly. We have a double burner and sink with 12 volt micro switch tap. And the micro switch is activated by turning on this here. We turn that off just in case we uh, get any problems with it and it doesn't sort of keep wasting our water. But basically, it's a micro switch tap like that. Not the fastest or the most powerful um, pump, but we just got it included with the package for the sink and the hob. You can get more powerful ones and you can actually change these uh, nozzles as well to more of a spray one. We might go down that route, but. It is really only for washing up and uh, filling the kettle. So it does the job for us. It's a really nice big one. So no messing about. We can get washed up. Wash our fish. Cook our fish. Fingers crossed. So the wastes for both the uh, bathroom sink and the kitchen sink here, uh, they just drain underneath the van. Um, on certain sites, and if you put in anything down that isn't uh, eco-friendly, uh, we've got buckets that we put underneath, and then we can empty those buckets. We do have some grey waste containers as well, so if we do need to go on a site, which uh, will stipulate that we need the grey waste containers, uh, we've got them. So we've got we've got both options, and so a lot of the time, if we're just using water, it can just happily go onto the road. So, fantastic luxury here, which is a microwave. Now we have an inverter underneath this bed. I'll show you all that gear later on. So cupboard number one is water, and a few other bits and bats as well. Make some cordial in there, some tins. But we have got plenty of storage for different bits of uh, food, so it doesn't necessarily need to live in there. The next one is the cutlery drawer. It's a bit of a mess at the minute, we need to divide it up. But other than that, the cutlery drawer now it's shaped like that because as you might be able to see the sink is there and the waste so rather than waste the top one or have a really really thin narrow drawer we decided go as an L shape next one is just a big old drawer. Now, as you can see, nothing's 
very organized at the moment so we'll probably end up dividing it up or maybe storing these in different places we've not really got down what we what goals were yet but we'll figure it out and then underneath is a what we're deciding at this moment is a pan drawer or a pan cupboard so as you can see all the uh, all the cupboard doors and the drawers are touch catches it's basically touch on it and then open it up the countertop is solid wood which we thought would be better because if it ever gets chipped or scratched you can sand it down re-oil it and there's no problems just know what it's going to be like with our fishing gear as well we'll scratch things up uh, bin can't have a camper on without a bin it is actually a pedestal bin um or a foot pedal bin even but we don't use that we just lift it up and put stuff in uh, there's a bit of a drawer here i wanted to use up a drawer that he had in storage again excuse the uh, organization we're really not organized as to where things are going as you can see we've got plates in this one <laughs> we've even got plates in that one over there but we've got some uh, eco-friendly washing up liquid there And all the bits and bats you might need for the sink under that. The LPG there with the sticker on it to tell people that that's what it is. We've also, on advice, uh, put a sticker of LPG on the back of the van as well, just for safety reasons. If uh, the worst should ever happen, we were in a crash, people would know that there's LPG on board. Big blind there on the window. Might be able to see me in there. We've got the luxury of a TV as well. You might just be able to see. There's some scratches. Now we've already we've already um, painted up this TV to match the colours of the van. bolt we've been using a stick just across here just to uh, wedge it in because the uh, the bracket that it's on isn't stiff enough so we're going to repaint that back up again i'm oh, sorry if it looks a bit shoddy when everything else when everything else looks lovely in this cupboard here we've got a couple of controls for electrics and Another cupboard there, which it currently has biscuits in, and a Bluetooth speaker. And in this cupboard, we just have pots and pans and some brew stuff, and oxo cubes, just some bits and bats, really. But again, like I say, we're sort of not sure what that just holds itself up as well with one of those catches. We're not just under percent sure yet where everything's going to go. So I'll just go through these cupboards here. So that top cupboard there is actually a mini wardrobe, as you can see. So that's just the electrics there for the cabin lights. A mini wardrobe. And above that, Again, there's some finishing off to do, maybe with these uh, piano hinges getting hidden. So, like, so as you can see, nicely hidden with that there. So that one probably needs hiding a little bit. We tend to not see it from down here anyway, so we're not sure if we're going to cover that up or not, but we'll see. But this is an overhead cupboard. The moment there is just my dad's fishing chair in there. But as you can see, it goes all the way back over the cab storage in there so in these bottom cupboards here we've got the spur wheel and some tools we're not sure whether or not to maybe mount the wheel on the roof just to get it out of the way and then we've got a bit more storage here but we seem to be getting on all right with the, our storage at the moment so 
we'll see on that one. We decided to go for a uh, long length curtain here. We need to uh, get a tie yet. Yeah. We'll just made a temporary tie there. I'll just show you this. But it just goes across, obviously. We've got some buttons on there which correspond to the buttons on here. As you can see, just unbutton from there and there and run it up. So another luxurious feature, we've got a skylight. You've got fly screen and then you've also got your curtains or blinds that go across. So we've got some of the puck lights in the ceiling. It's just 12 volts. Now that was a pheasant. Let's see if we can find him. There he is. Cheeky pheasant. Lovely little spot here where we are. I'm just showing you the camper in a little place called Angles Ark. Now this thing here might sort of look out of place, but we've tried to make it as integrated to the uh, as flush as possible. But basically what that is, is we have a bucket down there. You have a bungee. And we stick it into there, like that. I'll show it you. I'll show it you all set up with the gear in it anyway. We just hang the corks up there. My cork goes here as well. On the other hook. And uh, it just protects the... Uh, Protects the wood here from getting scratched with the uh, rods. Get quite a few rods in there, as you can see. And some bungee will stretch right out to here. Probably get about, I don't know, 10 rods in there. Uh, bucket just on the floor. Again, stopping from going anywhere. And uh, buckets are always handy for uh, fishing with, as we all know. And so, like I say, bungee just clips into there. And then lastly, there's a blind just there just to cover the cab off like so for the flooring as you can see we went for a heavy duty really hard wearing vinyl but because we're always at seaside locations we just bought a couple of runners as you can see non-slip runners and they can be shook off from all the sand and dirt and I think they're washable as well so another couple of features we've got USB main sockets on the back here we've just kept these and cleaned them up and they're like a fiberglass panel and pull on that and pull your blind down. The ladies of the family don't quite like the stark, stark white panels, um, but for us personally, it's uh, it's very durable and it's wipeable as well, easily replaceable. Um, and the thing is, we, we're going to have these doors open quite often when we're fishing. So the reality is, is if we was to carpet it, say like this stuff, I mean, it's lovely. And it would be a little bit more insulating, although it's quite warm anyway. It just means that it's just not going to get wet through. So we decided the opening doors, which is our slider. And the back doors, we decided to leave the panels on. So we've got a light switch here, which puts the main cabin lights on, and then obviously we've, we've, we've positioned it here, back access as you're coming in the back maybe, to turn it on, and or if we're in bed and we want to turn the lights off as well. We've also got one round here, just as you come into the side door. And also a grab handle for the old man. <laughs> but I use it as well because it's plumbing handy. So as you can see, that's the underneath of the bed. With all the electrics on one side separately. It's actually uh, separated by a piece of wood. So we don't want things going into that compartment if we, don't, uh, if we can help it. So as you can see, that's the bedding. 
the pole for the side and underneath here is obviously the ladder and a hook up for when we need to be on a hook up on the campsites now it may look slightly messy but everything's got its place so as you'll see here most of the things are fused separately there so all we've got the DC outlet which is up there is just fused in there the refrigerator is on a separate fuse as well because we've hardwired that in because we want that to be running all the time um, we've also got that fuse there's a fuse that comes off of here that runs this now this is just so that separately to opening the bed up we can see our voltages um, we can turn off turn on and off separate things like the tap and the TV and this here is an inverter controller it's telling us we're pretty much 90% there now it's good that we've got this controller because as you can hear just down there that's the inverter running and it is very noisy so luckily we have a separate switch to switch off the inverter so that we don't if we don't need it we can turn it off the inverter runs these sockets here with the usbs on all the 240 sockets are running through this which is like a mini consumer unit breaker thing um just it's one of the camping ones but we've utilized it um so it's safer everything's got an isolator switch down there um, the battery is separately isolated, the inverter is separately isolated, the solar is separately isolated, and the fuse panel is separately isolated as well. So we went for this solar controller. Now the reason we went for that is because it's Bluetooth and you can check all your vital statistics uh, on your phone. So we don't need to keep going underneath the bed to, uh, to look at it. Uh, this, as it says, hookup socket. Basically, rather than having one of the fancy switches that cost a fortune, what we do is this cable here is we just unplug that to the, and then our outside socket, which is behind the bed, um, our outside socket then becomes live, and these the sockets here can also then be live from shore power, as they say, or uh, a camping hookup on site. And then similarly, when we're finished with that, just turn it off if you want. I put a switch on there, just why not? Uh, so unplug that and then plug that back into the inverter. And then whenever we switch the inverter on in that cupboard up there, our sockets and our microwave becomes active. So we've got we've got a separate battery there that's fully charged. So if we need to, we can use this isolator switch here with the key just dangling and we can uh, we can hook that up if we need to as well um, but it's just running just the one battery the marine and leisure battery and that seems to be doing us just fine we've done tests on the microwave uh, we've run it for about four minutes uh, on and off and it doesn't really seem to impact the uh, battery at all so obviously if we're going to use it for a long time what you've got to realize is it takes a lot of power so your inverter obviously will do the job but your battery um, will get zapped but that's the whole point that we've got a solar panel that we can uh, get it charged up with so as you can see on the roof we have a solar panel 230 watts seems to charge the battery really quickly which is nice there's probably a million different ways that you can do electrics um, if you do want to ask us any questions about it, obviously you can, but we're no experts. We've really only used the internet as well to uh, find out what we need to do. We've not really done anything special or um, or not standard. We've tried to keep everything standard as, as, we, as we can and bought it shop-bought. Some of the cabling that we've used, we already had. Um, we've had to buy a few of the jump cables there for the isolator switches from Halfords but you can get all this kind of stuff on the internet anyway so that is kind of the electrics I'll just go through a few other things for you so the ceiling 
is a plastic ceiling. Uh, we did that because it's easy to put up, uh, it's lightweight and um, easily insulating behind as well. The walls are ply lined and I've got a uh, fiberglass over them as well. Well, we bought it like that, so that was lucky for us. So when we were doing the electrics, we decided that we obviously were going to have some some conduits. Um, and there's, a, there's, a, there's, there's another one here. But actually, a lot of the electrics do go through this. Now, my dad had the idea, I don't know if you can sort of see, but it goes right from top to bottom. And it's actually a bed frame um, and it's solid so that that basically means that we've got a solid click for the door but on top of that also means that we've got a solid connection for the bed so the bed sits into the and then it's solid as a rock against the uh, ladder so before it gets too dark to film I'll just show you inside the cab just quickly we decided to install one of these, which is a touchscreen um, reverse camera. I'll, I'll try and show you the reverse camera in a minute. And then I just installed myself a phone holder. So as you can see there, that's the reverse camera. A big, big up to my dad for all the woodwork in this van. He's formerly a joiner. Time serves and uh, he doesn't have to do a good job. And you know me, just as a word of safety, we've always got a first aid kit on board, a fire extinguisher, and a fire and carbon monoxide detector as well, which is, uh, I think, of paramount, paramount importance, really, when you're camping. And on top of the other fire safety uh, equipment that we've got, we've also got a fire blanket. If there's absolutely anything I've uh, forgot to talk about, uh, about the van, I'll, uh, I'll try and include it with pictures uh, at the end because obviously with this not being one of our fishing videos there's no maps at the end <laughs> um, but I'll uh, I'll add it in at the end and uh, I'll let you know if there's anything that I forgot so until next time or until we're fishing next I'll see you later mm -hmm.